Hey guys, welcome to the final round of the St. Petersburg Tournament in 1895. Uh, Lasker drew the 17th game, so I believe that means he has 11 out of 17 for a plus 5 score. And he's already clinched the tournament. Uh, the last round game, I'm kind of just showing this one to you. That's well, the last day of April. <laughs> one day left, I figure I should finish the tournament this month. Um, this game is very strange. I looked at this game and was like, what the heck drugs were Steinitz and Lasker taking this game? I mean, one thing to keep in mind, the tournament was already decided, and I think I think Lasker was going to get first, and I think Steinitz had already clinched second. So, I'm not sure that that's true, but this was a strange-ass game. So first, black to move in this position, what would you play? And this is an important moment. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so... We would love to castle, but white would then go bishop takes h7, and we would lose our queen. So the best move is probably just like something like queen to f4, with the idea of castling next move. If white tries to stop that with some move like bishop c4, all right, we'll just castle anyway. <laughs> You'll take, we'll take this rook to e8, king, uh, maybe the other rook to e8, but just in case king d3, we could go uh, rook to d8. All right, I'll play the right move. What I meant is if king to d3, rook d8 might be good here. Um, king f1, queen h2. Queen h1 is coming. Game's over. White wins. Uh, black wins, sorry. Uh, you know, it might be the other rook's good, though, so bishop f7 we can take with the rook. I can't remember. The main point is, however, that, uh, that queen f4 is the best move. Um... What Lasker does here is very strange. He plays the move king to f8. This is not a move you want to emulate. These are, you just don't do, you can't play with your king in the center of the board like this. I don't know what was going on. Lasker maybe, you know, he won first place. Tournament's over, nothing at the line, no elo points back then. Maybe he's just like, screw it, I'm going to do whatever I want because I'm Lasker, I'm world champion. What you going to do about it, Steinitz? Uh, so the game continues. Uh, bishop c4. Take, take, queen e5. I mean, it's just a stupid position for for black because uh, the king's in the middle of the board. Rook d7. Look at this. Rook d8. If, by the way, if queen h2, this move wins. Because the idea is after king takes, queen d7. So black had to go rook d8. White just took it. And now, like, queen takes b7, threatening f7. Kept the queens on the board. Smart decision. Uh, he could bring his rook into the game now. He didn't, though. He went queen d4. Rook to d1. I mean, white is up a pawn with a strong attack. Bishop's the opposite color. Game's virtually over. Bishop e7. He took a second pawn. I don't remember if he needed to do that or not, but it looks fine. Queen d7. Bishop b5, threatening queen e8, and queen takes e7. King f7, as ugly as it is, is probably the only defense. And I believe at this point white has some forced wins, like like queen to d5, uh, followed by, I don't know, I think something like this is winning. Can't, I can't quite remember why. <laughs> let me let me check this out, actually. I have my notes somewhere here. Oh, oh the point is, okay, the point is now queen b7. And there's no way to defend this bishop. It's that simple. King f8, I guess, like rook e1 or something. Or even, yeah, that's probably rook e1. As, the position's horrible. That's all I'm saying. Ridiculous position for black. Rook d4 was played. Queen takes f3. Bishop check. King f8, queen e6. And he was hoping that this would be enough to win the game, but I, I think he just overlooked something. Uh, he missed queen h1, king e2, queen h5, and after f3, black played queen to e5 check. And, and you know, I don't know how the heck Lasker got out of this. He's basically Houdini, um, because now we have an endgame, bishops of opposite color. <laughs> black started pushing the pawns, he developed his rook in some weird-ass way, and suddenly, and notice here he even declines a draw. I mean, rook takes rook is a dead draw. But he keeps the rooks on the board. 
And, and you know, actually, like, world champions are very good at not trading pieces. It's just like one of their specialties. But after, after Rook D8, they just agree to a draw here. So, with this game, Lasker is the winner of the tournament. And I think he got, what, 12 out of 18 or something? Or no, 11 and a half out of 18 for plus 5. Uh, this is a weird game. I'm just showing it just because I thought it was funny at the time. I was just like, how the heck do you not lose this position? And why the hell are you going king to f8? What, what's going on? Um, but again, like I said, there's explanations for it. It was the last round. There wasn't that much at stake anymore, especially for Lasker. It's a shame, though, that Steinitz couldn't pull this one out. That's for sure. Uh, don't play moves like king f8. You need to keep your king castled in open positions like that. The board's wide open. You can't just play with your king in the middle of the board. But despite that, overall, a very interesting tournament. Uh, I love that game against Pillsbury. I loved his one win against Chigorin that was kind of like where they traded all the pieces and then he went f4. And then after takes queen d4, led to mate. So a lot of really cool performances from Lasker in this tournament. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And while we're talking about that, let me see what the next, next tournament in line is. Uh, it looks like it's going to be... Oh, one of my favorites, Nuremberg. I think this, yeah, this is one of my favorite tournaments. Lasker wins this one too, so we're going to see a bunch more of his games. But there's a funny storyline that goes on during that tournament, and we'll talk about that some more tomorrow. So thanks guys for watching this tournament series, and I'll see you in May, which is tomorrow. Bye-bye.